I'm image consultant Sandy Dumont, known as the Image Architect. And you might wonder why I'm called the Image Architect. One of my clients gave me that name many, many years ago. At the end of the makeover session, he said, Sandy, you have nailed it. You've got everything down. And what he was explaining to me was that I had a technical reason for everything I told him about the pattern of his tie, the pattern on his shirt, or his suit, the color, and he said, you're the image architect. So I am technically based. I don't do that's you, darling. Today we're going to talk about ties, because ties do talk. They tell everything about you, including your socioeconomic background. So the first thing you're going to learn is that ties need to pop. They need to dominate your shirt and your suit. And we're going to look at a tie with a blue shirt and it's a regular Ivy League pattern. Quite nice as a pattern. But what I want you to see is that if you looked at these two man, men, you're going to judge one man to be more powerful than the other. And that's because one tie is wimpy. It's all washed out. It has more blue in the pattern than red and this one has more red, so it gives contrast. And write that down. Contrast is key with ties. Your tie needs to pop. If it blends in, why bother to wear a tie? So let's take a look at some patterns that are nice. Small repeating patterns, like the one I just showed you. And the pattern in the past came from the regiment you were in, your hobby, and all kinds of references. The reason I know menswear so thoroughly is because I lived in London for a couple of years and there I mastered the art of menswear. I scoured the streets of Savile Row and German Street and that's where all of the titans of industry and heads of state and crowned heads also shop. So there's a reason for every pattern and every color, and it relates to patterns on your ties, your clan, your regiment, your hobby, and so forth. But what I can tell you is that old money is always discreet. So they have small repeating patterns that are symbolic. This is a very European pattern. And it says, for example, with this tie, airplanes on it, it says, I'm a pilot, or maybe I own an airline, or maybe I have a fleet of small jets. There's another Ivy League repeating pattern that is always looking classy because old money isn't loud and flashy. So this pattern, loud and flashy. Big geometric patterns, you don't want them. You want small repeating patterns. And one of the nicest small repeating patterns is the tiny polka dot. Here's one of my favorite ties also. This is in my collection. You can buy many ties from my website, theimagearchitect.com. This is for me the new red along with this magenta raspberry color. And this goes with white shirts. It goes with blue shirts. And it's great with a navy blue suit. And of course, if you had it with a black stripe, it would be great with a black suit as well. So if you go to my website, you'll see someone in royalty wearing it, and you'll see a former president of the United States wearing a tie almost identical to this one. So the new red for me, because everybody wears a red tie, and for good reason. It suggests power, authority, and enterprising nature. And it's just a very good business color, but everybody else has one and you enter the room with your beautiful, elegant raspberry tie and you make a statement that you are slightly apart from all the competition. All right, here's one stripe that you don't want to wear. All the other stripes that I'm going to show you have diagonal stripes. And let's bring our blue shirt back again. If you were to wear this tie, given to me by a powerful attorney, but he soon learned that if you're speaking to the jury or the judge, 
if you have on a horizontal stripe, the eye will be commanded nearly because straight lines are commanding, they catch the eye, you'll look down at the tie and lose your train of thought. However, if you have on a striped tie that is diagonal, it goes out into infinity. It doesn't have this jarring straight line like this one does. So no horizontal stripes for you, only vertical stripes. What I want you to see now is the difference in patterns. These are really great patterns, as a matter of fact, because they have the color, the dominant color, in a wide swath of color. In one case, yellow, and in one case, red. And the blue is the secondary color, and it's in the small amount. That's what you want to look for. So this makes contrast with your suit and with your shirt. If it were reversed and you had on the navy blue suit, it would be like this tie. You would hardly be able to see it and it would blend into your shirt as well. So you want to have the primary color in the big swath of color that makes contrast with your suit and shirt. And what I like very often is the fact that they put a little tiny bit of white, sometimes a little bit wider amount. Sometimes it can be okay to have a blue stripe and a red stripe and not another color like white or a narrow black band thrown in, but it's very traditional to see that little bit of white. So gentlemen, now I'm going to show you my rogues gallery of ties, what not to wear in other words, and this is my favorite. I have a collection of ties that Men have donated, and I could have thousands of them, but I've stopped taking donations lately, except for this category. And you'll notice lots of ties in brown, gray, and black. Brown, gray, and black with a little, sometimes, beige or camel thrown in, but tons and tons of them. And you almost can't tell one from the other. They're all looking pretty much alike. And I've asked my clients, how do you wear these ties? And they tell me, well, I usually wear it with a white shirt, and I can wear it with my black suit, I can wear it with my gray suit, and I can wear it with my brown suit. Well, what you need to know, gentlemen, is that brown is not a power color. Brown is country weekend. Now, there's a place for it. And if you live in the Midwest and you work for a tractor-making company, or if you're in the agricultural business, brown is perfect for you. But most often, it's a non-threatening color, so a non-business color. And you may not need any of these ties. Black is a special color also, and I need to test every single client to see if black looks too severe on them. Navy blue is, is generally a safe color for most people. None of these ties go with navy blue suits, do they? So they're not any of them good ties, plus geometric patterns, you may recall, are not advised by the image architect. So, a few other ties that not you don't want to wear, want not to wear, are pastels. Pastels, even Donald Trump uh, shouldn't be wearing a pastel, although he lived in the Deep South in Palm Beach, and they wear a lot of pastel ties there. But if you've got the money and the power already, you might try it, but otherwise it suggests you are a little bit passive and wimpy. Here's a few more what not to wear. And I get a lot of ties from Jerry Garcia. There he is, Jerry Garcia, and pardon the pun, but every one that I've seen is drab and rather dead looking. So you don't want to make a collection of Jerry Garcia ties or any slightly gaudy patterns. Here's one of my absolute favorites. Yes, yes. You could wear it at Christmas time maybe, but I have a better idea for Christmas ties. So gentlemen, if you want to make a statement, a powerful statement about yourself, contact me. Here's what I suggest. Have me come to your company and make sure your staff isn't disgracing itself by wearing ties that don't look powerful, that don't look classy, or don't look authoritative. Fly me in a day early and we'll have a private session for you, and then we'll transform the bottom line of your company. Contact me at theimagearchitect.com.